Rice has bumped from the field Al Loquasto. But more bumping is yet to come. We still have about 41 minutes left of qualifying at Indianapolis in this year of 1978. Larry Rice, however, can take some deep breaths. There's Al Loquasto on the left trying to muster something resembling a brave smile. As we said, he's a real sportsman, a fine fella. Too bad that he won't make the race this year. We'll be right back at Indianapolis. The car can do a lap in 60 seconds. You can do the car in 19. And that's the way it has to be, because you don't win races on the track unless you win them in the pit first. And now comes Miller time. Time to slow down and head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. And when it's time to relax, Miller stands clear. Beer after beer. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. If you got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Next Sunday on ABC, exclusive same-day coverage of one of the world's biggest single-day sporting events, the Indianapolis 500, a special time, 8.50, 7.50 Central. And later tonight, over most of these ABC stations, a special report on the final day of qualifying. Well, I'm here with Al LaCosta, who has just been bumped from this year's Indianapolis 500. Al, you're one of the nice guys. You've still got a smile on your face. This happened in 75, and now again. What are your thoughts? Well, Chris, I, I knew it was going to happen. Like, like I said, this morning when I went out and practiced with the car, I jumped out of third gear, and I tagged 12 grand and bent all the valves in it. My chief mechanic, Clint Broner, says, hey, we have nothing else to do. Let's take it out and just get what we can out of it. And we were really surprised it even ran as quick as it did. We thought it'd blow because all the valves were bent in the engine. Then you got into one of Tessie Vadis' cars as a backup. What happened to that one? Yeah, Tessie Vadis was nice enough to put me in his backup car, and I went out and in four laps run over 176 and a half in it and figured I was going on a backstretch after I read the board, and I said, hey, I'm in this turkey again, and the engine exploded on the backstretch. So it wasn't my year. Well, that's true. I said all the best to your dad, who's back in his hometown recovering from a heart attack. Better luck next year, Al. Thank you, Chris. Hi, boss. Man. Okay, back to you, Jim. All right, Chris. Thank you very much. Car number 69. Down low on the race car, of course, is driven by Joe Saldana, another rookie from Lincoln, Nebraska, a rookie at age 33. But, of course, Graham Hill, when he came here, oh, I guess he was 39 or 40 at that time, uh, close to it, and had twice been the world driving champion. He was still a rookie because he hadn't made India. yet. Well, it's quite amusing to come to Indianapolis after having done fairly well around the world. I remember when I came here, I came here in 1966, and uh, I came here to do some tire testing before that, and everybody said, no, you can only do a certain speed around this racetrack because you're a rookie, you can't go this fast. <laughs> and I remember thinking, well, here was I uh, doing very well in Grand Prix racing and having raced in the strange places, and there I was as a rookie. <laughs> Waiting for his turn next is Larry Cannon. He hasn't qualified yet. The pumping really underway and at a frantic pace here with a little over 35 minutes left for qualifying for this year's Indianapolis 500. Joe Saldana, as we said, is from Lincoln, Nebraska. Presently lives in Brownsburg, Indiana, however, but still likes to list Lincoln as his hometown. Works as a bricklayer when he's not busy racing. At this level of racing, you know, you're not A.J. Boyd and you're not Bobby Unser. You very often have to do something else. Jim McElreath, for example, the veteran, is a bricklayer in his, not his spare time, but his other time. Well, lots of occupations make racing drivers, and that's the way it has to be. Everybody associates everybody with the top end of the scale, of course, and they see the glamour, the color, and the excitement. But my, my, is it different in other areas of the sport and other levels? Well, Joe, you know, was actually the 26th qualifier for this race last year. However, he himself was bumped from the starting line up by John Mailer, the final car to make the starting field. So Joe Saldana knows what it's like to be bumped, and now he's going to try to bump somebody else. The slowest speed at this point is Bob Harkey, 186.133. Remember, he just made the field a little while ago, and now he is the man on the bubble. 
Well, it's always a nerve-wracking time, this. If one goes down pit lane, there's a lot of forced smiles. You know, the, everybody's trying to put a, put a little bit of smile into the air, but my goodness, it's not really a smile inside. The stomach's churning and the aching takes place. It's very ulcer-making. I think after this day, <laughs> there's a lot of medication coming out. Okay, that's Joe Saldana, and here is Bob Harkey. Bill Fleming with him, Bill. Yeah, I'm with uh, Bob Harkey right now. Bob, uh, what do you think the chances are of staying in the field? Uh, two, slim and none at this point. <laughs> really? Are you that pessimistic? Uh, yeah, because uh, I know that uh, that uh, Larry Cannon can do it easily. He was running 90, and I don't know about Joe Saldana's new engine. He was running pretty fast, too, but if his new engine is not performing, that may be a disadvantage to him. But prior to, to blowing the last engine, he was running plenty I'm fast enough. Oh, gun it, Bob. If that happened, your moment of joy would only be about 15 minutes long. Let's hope it doesn't happen to you. Okay, Chip. Okay, thanks very much, Bill Fleming, with Bob Harkey, the current man on the bubble. And there's Joe Saldana in car number 69. Young man from Lincoln, Nebraska, as we said. I consider age 33 to be young myself. And there, the green flag in the hand of Pat Fedan. He's under the green. He's trying to make his qualification for the 500 right now. Let's have a look at him going around the racetrack. Let's see that groove that's been carved out of this tarmac by all of these cars. This is the groove that you have to be in if you're going to be quick. Let's see how close he gets to the wall going around here. You can see that he's well away from the wall, in fact. And this is the sight that you get when the really hot drivers are on. They're only fractions of inches away from that wall, the precision involved. The drivers who are perhaps less confident or less used to these super speedways give that wall a fair berth. There's Bob Harkey up there on the left-hand side of your picture, the man on the bubble sitting there. And there you see that car going through there, still certainly a long way from that wall. Saldana giving it the respect that it deserves. I've had a little kiss of that wall from time to time, and I can tell you it's no great fun. It certainly shakes your head about a bit, Jim. Again, our clock is running on the total time. If he does less than 3.13.41 unofficially, he will have broken the bubble of Bob Harkey. Harkey, by the way, at age 47, has been in the Indianapolis 500 six times. The first time, 14 years ago, back in 1964, he qualified 19th and finished 8th in the race. He also finished 8th in 1974. Those were his best finishes. And the first speed for Saldana, 189.994. The bubble is beginning to press in on Bob Harkey. That's only one of four laps, however. Well, that's a very good lap time. That'll put him well into the field. In fact, that'll put him right up, probably into about the eighth or ninth row of the starting grid if he can keep this sort of pace up. So, in fact, it's a good time of the day, remember. We're now looking at a time of the day where the temperature has gone down and these engines do work a great deal better with the cool air. The turbochargers give a better performance. And this, of course, many drivers take the big gamble at Indianapolis to see if they can snatch the new record speed around the racetrack. He's not interested in that. He's only interested in getting in. But my goodness, on his second lap, he's done a speed of 190.799 miles an hour. Pretty good for Joe Soldana. I hope to tell you, very good speed for this man from Lincoln, Nebraska. And Harkey's smile has literally faded. He was still smiling on the first lap, but not now. At age 47, he has to be hoping, well, perhaps for just one more start in the Indianapolis 500. Well, right now, Joe Saldana is on his very last lap. He's, given, he's been given the white flag by Pat Medan. He's only got a couple of corners to go. He exits from turn two and heads down the back stretch for the last time, heading towards turn three that used to be very bumpy in Indianapolis, but now has been resurfaced. It's a great deal better. Clarence Cagle, the master of surfaces in racing. Boy, and he just keeps, excuse me, keeps uh, upping those lap times. Sorry, Jackie. 191.530 in the third lap. And this is very unusual because race drivers generally get a little slower as the tire temperatures go up. He's coming down to take the checkered flag, and he's well and truly into the 500 mile race. Oh, yeah, he's by five seconds beating the time of Bob Harkey. And now the sportsman likes smile because Harkey knows that the bubble has burst for him. One man after another now being eliminated from a start in the Indianapolis 500. One man after another making the field and this time the man in is Joe Saldana. The man out is Bob Harkey. There's still a half an hour to go. 
at Yamaha, we don't just have a little test track out behind the factory. We also test our engineering ideas wherever they race motorcycles, from Carlsbad to Watkins Glen, from Daytona to Le Mans. In fact, Yamaha is the winningest racer in the world. And every time we race, we learn more about how to build you a better motorcycle. At Fram, we've taken what we've learned about babies like these and designed a super air filter for cars. Inside a normal car filter, outside an extra filter. In tests, compared to our normal single air filter, the Fram with the extra filter lasted 50% longer. So we call it the Fram Extra Life. Why not put one in? It costs no more, and it saves a lot later. Fram and Autolite are Bendix companies. Sunday, Hal Linden hosts a special for the family, Sweden's Royal Command Circus. We're here at one of the Pit Barbecue restaurants to get some candid interviews from some of our little customers. What do you like best about Pit Barbecue? The sandwich, the beef, chicken, <laughs> sausage, the beans, the coleslaw. Who makes the best barbecue chicken in town? Pit Barbecue. This is the house that Conan builds. This is the all-steel reinforced slab Conan uses. This is the conventional handcrafted framework Conan uses. This is the energy efficient styrofoam sheathing included in the energy package Conan uses. This is the 100% masonry exterior Conan uses. This is the house that Conan builds, and you can see it in the all-new beautiful Conan community of Woodcliffe, located east of I-35 and Breaker Lane on Cameron Road. Conan Homes, where perfection is built on detail. Action News, the best and getting better. We return live to Indianapolis. Jim McKay here with Jackie Stewart, and on the racetrack is Larry, known as Boom Boom Cannon, 41-year-old race driver from Danville, Illinois. Jackie, we were talking a while ago about how many professions produce race drivers. Larry Cannon's a barber. Well, I'm sure he's had a few close shaves, yes. but... <laughs> trying to, right now to trim the time of the man on the bubble, Graham McRae. There is Larry Cannon, heavy set fellow. He's also been in politics in his hometown of Danville, Illinois. Kind of a colorful guy. The time to beat is 3.12.55. And there's the man on the bubble, the only foreign driver to have made the field this year, Graham McRae of New Zealand. A very good driver, too. Yes, he was called Cassius McRae when he came over to Britain originally to race on road racing. And now the green flag has been given to Boom Boom Cannon. But Graham McRae, when he came over, was very hot, very fast, a little bit uh, accident-prone to begin with. He's a very tough guy. You can see he's a fairly broad individual. A real heavy set, strong, muscular man. I'm sure now he's flexing a few muscles in hope, perhaps in prayer, that he's still left in this race to compete. A long way to come from New Zealand, although he makes most of his time here in the United States now. Very happily disposed, but the man in the... The car there, Boom Boom Cannon, very colorful in his blue and yellow car. I don't know, Bill Fleming somewhere down in the pits. Maybe Bill Fleming can find a way to get to McCree. Bill, are you there? Jackie, I couldn't get any closer to him. Okay, why don't you talk to him? <laughs> All right, Graham, of course, uh, hasn't been here since 1973, and he has an anxious moment right now. Do you think that uh, it can happen that Boom Boom has been running fast enough? Yes, I'm confident that he'll be in the show. I think he ran 191 or something this morning. And I, when I uh, took my qualifying time, I did not expect it to stand up. You were, really, you were really kind of under the gun, though, weren't you? The pressure builds so much in the last couple of hours here. Well, yes, I think the engine's been going off gradually over the month. Uh, they're just saying he's not fast enough. Well, I guess. <laughs> we see there's always hope. I Bill, excuse me. Having for rain and I hope for wind. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Bill. The time for Larry Cannon, 182.149. That's not nearly good enough. It'll be a miracle if I'm in there. All right, Jim. We'll uh, we'll keep him right here. You go ahead and cover it. Okay. Graham McRae, the man on the bubble, pessimistic, but right now. Well, I guess 
everybody's got to be pessimistic when they're thinking of that. Remember, the time to beat, if we're looking at our clock on there, is 3 minutes 12.55 seconds. So that's the time, that the bogey time to meet here to see if Graham McRae still stays in the race and Boom Boom Cannon, he's got to speed up incredibly, in fact, to get into this race right now. Of course, technically, I suppose, it's for him, this is... And a second lap time slower, 180.796 miles an hour. This certainly isn't going to be fast enough. Well, they could wave him off, but in all probability then he would not have time to get back out on the race course again. There's uh, 25, 26 minutes to go, and there are other cars, I believe, still in line who would be ahead of him. He's getting the white flag, however, meaning one lap to go. Looks like he was a little squirrely coming through the home stretch there. Well, he's certainly trying his very best, I'm sure, but he must know because he's been given pit signals there by his crew, and therefore he'll know what's happening time-wise. Bill Fleming, what was McRae saying to you? He said, well, he said, there's no use taking the yellow because he's already had one shot. This is it for him. He's got to ride with that. He's, okay. worried, about, he's worried about Vukovic, who's coming up next. That's right. In, in the relief, or not relief, but in place of Bobby Jones in the car 18. Okay, 180.542 on the third lap. Boom Boom Cannon might as well forget it for this year. And he had been turning in, as McRae indicated, extremely good. Fast times, much faster than that. I, I can only assume that the performance of the car is not good enough. And look at Graham McRae standing there now. He's just had a short reprieve. However, as Bill indicated, he is now worried and really worried about Bill, Bill Vukovic, who should be next on the racetrack. For the moment, however, he enjoys a laugh in the pits. Graham McRae still sits perilously on his bubble. Standing right next to where Bill Vukovic is waiting to go out. Maybe get a word with him, Bill. What's no, sorry, we're going to take a break right now and then we will be back perhaps to talk to Graham McRae, perhaps to watch Bill Vukovic. It's all live, it's happening now. Even on a practice lap at Indianapolis, you hit 150 miles an hour. So you look to the warning lights to tell you what's happening ahead of you. And to power all 12 around the track, Indianapolis depends on Sears diehard batteries. The same battery that's been starting Indy cars since 1970. The same battery that has extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. The maintenance-free diehard. Sold only at Sears. Introducing Turtle Extra, the thickest, most effective wax turtle wax has ever made. With special wax and polymers that cling to a car's finish. To demonstrate, we sank this car before we buffed it. Look, hours later, the wax is still there. Turtle Extra won't run out on you, and it protects your car from rain, sun, salt, and sand. Turtle Extra, from Turtle Wax. Fifteen knockouts in 26 victories. WBC World Away champion Carlos Palomino makes the seventh defense of his title against Armando Muniz, a veteran World Away contender who fought Palomino in an epic 15-round bout last year. The World World Away Championship live. Plus, a visit to spring practice at three college football powerhouses, Notre Dame, Alabama, and Arkansas. All Saturday afternoon on ABC's Wide World of Sports. In the 1950s, Bill Vukovic's father was the most famous race driver in Indianapolis. He won this race twice in a row, was trying for an unprecedented third in a row when he was killed in a tragic racing accident. Young Bill Vukovic, well, he's been on the circuit for a good many years now. He has never achieved the prominence of his father, and right now, he has taken over a car that another man failed to qualify. Bobby Jones took this car out twice before, only made one official qualification attempt, however. So Vukovic technically has two attempts left to him, but with the time situation right now, this is going to be the one. Bill Vukovic in the upper left-hand corner of your screen is the man in the car. The man on the bubble is now in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, Graham McRae from Wellington, New Zealand. Bill Vukovic is 34 years old now, makes his home in a town called Coarse Gold, California. He's a six-footer, father of three, first passed his driver's test in 1968. Waiting to take the green flag, he has four laps to qualify. And you know, the tension that exists here now, Jackie, is a measure of what it means to a race driver, not only to win the Indianapolis 500, to be in the Indianapolis 500, because none of these cars really figure to win it, just to make the field. Well, it is an amazing feeling, particularly in a man like Billy Vukovic, because 
he is a top line driver he's raced here many times before and is very talented he knows his way around this racetrack he knows the groove he knows what the pressure is but he's driving a car which is completely strange to him now a car that he hasn't had any time in and you know racing cars are very much like animals you've really got to be able to to know that car now it doesn't seem that he's taken the green now this seems very strange because Bill Vukovic knows the situation here He's got to get as many laps. In fact, he's not even staying up in the groove too well. Look at McRae's face, concerned. He's not quite sure what's happening. This could be another reprieve for him. Graham McRae, the New Zealander, he's 38 years of age as well. So he's got to go now to the back of the line because he didn't take that green when he should have done. And the officials will now make him go to the back of the line. And we're looking at our watches and there's probably only around 20 minutes to go. Graham McRae really must feel like the guy that the governor has pardoned twice because he definitely felt that Vukovic uh, was going to beat him. He said as much to Bill Fleming. In line now is John Martin, whose car has not really been fast in practice. He'll be going out, however, to make his final attempt to qualify for the race. We'll be here live when he does. This racing shot cost a thousand dollars. It was built by Gabriel especially for Al Unser and Jim Hall. They're testing it on their new Indy car and in the process helping Gabriel perfect the shocks we make for you. Because at Gabriel, we learn from racing. And now, Gabriel will give you free a racing jacket like the ones that Al and Jim are